up everybody we're gonna give it a few more minutes let a few more people hop on before i get to talking thank you guys for joining me spread the word let's chat guys remember this one come on now let everybody know we're on i'm going to talk about this great music come on let everybody know remember where the first time you heard this where were you who are you dancing with <laughs> i'm curious to know let me know i know why i remember dropping it but you guys might have heard it before then man we were getting it in wasn't we come on now What you know about that man? What you know about that? Turn around, 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 back, back, face, man. 
so many great Baltimore tracks. So many times, uh, me and some of my uh, buddies would get together and just throw some Baltimore tracks together because that was the hot thing to do. You always wanted to have some original shit. <laughs> A lot of this stuff was debuted at the Post just because... We're going to get into talking about that in a minute. What's up? Welcome, everybody. Thank you guys for joining me. Let everybody know. Come on, hurry up. Let's get to some good stuff. Oh my God, just so many beats is going on. What's up? So, there's been so much of the debate about what this music is called. I, myself, got introduced to it in around 1998-ish, 99. There was a hip-hop evasion going on. <laughs> and so, um, hip-hop was just coming into the scene I didn't quite know what to do. And uh, a buddy of mine who came down, whew, it was it was so good. My man, DJ Cedric Drayton is what his name is. We are called him the district house mother. You guys, we're gonna hold on for a second. I'm gonna get into some juiciness about that. What's up, what's up, thank you. Love this clowning. What's up? Yes, yes, yes. So look, getting back to the juicy stories. <laughs> Once again, thank you guys. So look, 
I was saying this music got introduced to me right around maybe 90, like I said, 98, 99. Um, I was doing a spot called the Tom Phillip Post. And uh, <clears throat> it was a late night after hours, mainly bumping house music. That's what the whole predecessor of what the whole post hookup was about. <clears throat> it was a place for me to be able to come out and play house music the way I wanted to play it without any interruptions, nobody telling me how to play, what I can play. It was something I created along with a friend of mine uh, at that time, my partner, Tiffany. Big ups to my girl, Tiff. Um, and so we got together, got this hall, started doing this place called The Post. And or like I said, around 1999, the music started to change uh, within the LGB black community. Uh, had a big audience of of that crowd coming, um, and <clears throat> hip hop, hip hop, the hip hop explosion is what I always try to dress it as. I mean, hip hop came into the scene, and um, you know, no no disrespect to the scene, no disrespect to the to your choice of going to hip hop, but hip hop came in, it changed all the clubs. Hold on, let's get a beat real quick. Hold on. So I made this when I was on MySpace. Let's tell you how late, how long ago this was. When you came to my MySpace page, this is what played. <laughs> what? This was an ugly white label. Come on to my MySpace page. <laughs> Y'all better come on over here and party with Sin. How long ago was MySpace? Oh my gosh. It just makes me want to dance. <laughs> oh yeah. That's how I was getting it in. But, um, you know, back then, like I say, 1999, 2000, had to come out with this Baltimore club music. So I'm at the post, finding out that DJ Cedric is in town, going to be doing a party somewhere else. <clears throat> I've got to have him come in. Oh, my God, I love Cedric. If you ever heard of Cedric from D.C., as they called him, the, um, District house mother, Whew. insane on the tables. <clears throat> Real quick story. First time I got introduced to Cedric was actually at Club Heavens. It was called Heavens. <clears throat> it was called Heaven, I'm sorry. And uh, my man came in and played along with Ken Collier. And, <laughs> and if you know anything about what Ken Collier was putting down, then you kind of also got a little a spectacle of what uh, my man, uh, uh, Cedric came in and did. Whew. Cedric is very uh, gospel infused, if, if we like to say so. And uh, when I get, when I say that box is churning, that box is churning. <laughs> One of my delights, you know, it's a very few, very, very few DJs that actually move me. Sad to say, but it's, it is the truth. Cedric is. I have no problem. I, I when I hear Cedric, I'm trying to, you know, even before Shazam was even created. I'm trying to figure out what is he playing. So um gonna bring that up. At the post, we're oh, it gets so juicy. So, you know, there's there's always competition. I like to call it friendly competition, unspoken competition, uh, as we like to say in the DJ world. Uh, I know who Cedric is. You know, you're in my home. This is my house, the post. Uh, I definitely have to represent. Can't let you come here and just spank old girl up. <laughs> We can't let that happen now, can we? Uh, so we're going neck and neck. We're battling. We're, we're, we're slaying, at this time, nothing but vinyl. We're playing no CD. CDJs had not been invented. Uh, so, uh, yeah, th that wasn't happening. Uh, we were strictly on a vinyl tip. And so Cedric, man, 
Cedric, I don't know what this is in my play. I'm gonna just drop it on, see what we got. Uh, Cedric comes in. We, like I said, we neck and neck. He, he, he beaten. I'm beaten, and he drops some bottom. I said, wait, is somebody cheating? <laughs> I, I don't have, I don't have that. No, I, I haven't even actually heard of any of that. Wait a minute. I'm like, okay, I like that. But, you know, that's that's a little different than what I'm doing. But I see my crowd is seem to respond pretty good. Cedric is dropping some nastiness in the building. And I don't have that. I, I don't believe record time or melodies and memories, buy rights. None of them have this. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm going to have to get some of that. And because it was Cedric playing it, and I knew that he was from D.C. area, um, I said, okay, well, they got some parties coming up. I'm going to have to fly on down. Me and my bestie. What's up, Patty? We we took a quick trip down to uh, the, the Baltimore, D.C. area. And uh, yes, we did. And I had to do some hunting. So quick story on that. I get there. We riding around. We get to Satellite Records. For those that remember the story, uh, Satellite Records, man, uh, get there over there in the D.C. area. Great house tracks. They, I mean, man, I've gotten stuff from there all the time. There's a couple of locations of Satellite Records. Big shout out to them. Not even sure if they're still operating, but mad love. Get there, go to a couple other little record stores, talking to different people, not quite knowing what to call this. What is this? I don't know. I'm just, I, all I know is Cedric. <laughs> all I know is Cedric came in here and played something. So that's my first clue. And that's exactly what I went in and asked. I said, hey, it's a guy named DJ Cedric, District House Mother, playing something sort of, uh, I want to say hip hop ish, but not quite. Um, it reflected to me uh, of ghetto, as I called it, booty music. Uh, now it's being addressed as ghetto tech music. Uh, we had just went through the booty, as they say, sex on the beach, uh, you know, gel and weave era here in the, in the Midwest Detroit area. And so um, I, I wasn't, didn't want to get that confused because it was not that. And it, But, you know, I'm not sure. It, it definitely wasn't played at that speed. Uh, but it was a little fast, but not quite as how we're, Running at 45, killing tracks. <laughs> oh, we'll have a talk about that. Uh, my girl, Nikki. Yes, yes. So I'm like, okay, no, it's, it's, it's similar to that, but it's not that. And so I, I, I get around. I'm talking to different record stores. I'm, I'm almost at my win. We're, we're getting close to the last day of being there. We're riding around the city. I go to another little record store. And just being friendly, talking to different people in the store, like, hey, you guys know about this different kind of music. An older gentleman hears me talking to one of the guys at the counter about this Baltimore club music. I say, He says, hey, there actually is a record store. It's on Saratoga Street. It's not too far from the airport. Uh, I believe that might be the store that carries the music you're looking for. I'm like, <laughs> 
okay, now we're on to something. And so we, you know, but we didn't have GPS back then. You had to do some searches. So we finally get around that area. <clears throat> Me and her arrived. We're bumping. You know, back then we got the cassette playing. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, that were, you know, so we're we're still bumping radio. We're not really paying attention. And something told me to turn the music down in the car. Say, hey, hold on, you might be missing something. Sure enough, I turned the music down, like now. And as we turned the windows down, we had the air conditioning blowing this summer. Man, I hear a little bit of beat. We we come around the corner. I park. We hop out the car. And as we're going. At to the corner store where I thought I heard the music from, there was this other record store, and this record store had some vinyl hanging on the wall, and this is actually where I got this particular record from. It was only a couple of Baltimore Club tracks that they actually had in the flavor of what I was looking for, but this and I'm gonna play this other one. Everybody's been looking for this tune for forever. Um, let me see what else is on here because I can't I can't remember all the stuff that's here. Uh. I mean, when you hear this, I came in and the guy drops this on the needle on the record. I said, "Oh, yeah, I need that." I mean, you, I mean, you go to the to a record store and they drop this on the needle. You're like, uh, yeah, I think I need a copy of that. What else you got? <laughs> and so this came with a couple of tracks. So I mean, come on. Have just ugliness, man. Just ugliness. <laughs> so of course, I'm like, I need that, and and um, it just had some crazy tracks going on, dude. It was just, you know, just. West side. East side. I didn't when I first got all this. Just to say that, um, I didn't even get a chance to play a lot of the tracks that I got because, like I say, when I walked into this one particular store. They only had two, as I want to call it, Baltimore Club tracks. That was this one that had Big Girls on it. And just hold on a second. Man. And then they had this one. And so... This became sort of a crazy ass anthem, I tell you. This was some shit. And like I said, they only had this. <laughs> oh my God. What bitches what? Ah, what bitches what? <laughs> Now what bitch is what? I said, oh yeah, okay, I need that one too. 
man, this is one of those tracks. Like I said, this was only two records that that particular record store, and I don't even know what the heck the name of the record store was uh, that these two tracks came from. But uh, I walked in and got those two records, and my man said, hey, there's actually a store on the corner that actually is selling more of that. So, you know, me and, uh, hold on, let <laughs> that was such ugly, ugly battle tune. That's what that turned into. So, as I go down the street, me and my buddy, we get to a store called Liberated Music. And um, I walk in, I start talking to the owner, which ends up being a gentleman named Bernie, uh, starting to describe this music. Hey, I just got to this other stuff from this other store down the street. This is the kind of stuff I'm looking for. But what do you have? I'm looking for whatever this guy, my man DJ Cedric is playing, whatever that is, I need. So a gentleman named Andre, long dreads, brother comes from the back. I explain the situation to him. He says, oh, man, hold on. Come on. I, I got you. Come on, walk with me. Man, we go in. We're walking around. We go in the back of the store. And my man pulls out a couple of uh, records as blow some dust stuff. I'm like, man, what's going on with that? <laughs> you know, real talk, blew some dust off of him. I said, what's going on with that? And he drops, I said, I need, I, whatever you got, he drops some um, Motown remixes. I'm saying, wait, I'm going to get into them. I said, wait, wait, wait a minute, you dropping uh, Diana Ross? You dropping I mean, you're, you're dropping respect. You're dro what are you dropping? I mean, I can't believe that you're putting this. This is actually on vinyl, and you're putting this on to me? This is actually on vinyl? <laughs> Let me say that again. That's actually on vinyl? And I'm like, wait a minute. I, I, I don't believe it, but here we go. And I'm like, no way. And so he, he drops his stuff. I'm like, oh, I need whatever you got. Whatever I got in my pocket can afford at this point, and we'll get connections. And so I said to say that was, like I say, 1999 going into 2000. I brought this to, to the post, had a backpack full, came home, did some research on a few tracks, and introduced that the following Friday. And uh, it's so funny because when I first dropped it, you know, my audience was used to me playing house music, so... Uh, but the battle, like I say, one of the main reasons, and I want everybody to understand, the main reasons that this music uh, got even introduced into the post or any, uh, you know, of, of my parties was because hip hop, hip hop had came into the club and just taken over. And so if you weren't playing any hip hop, uh, you know, the, the pressure of trying to play what was the familiar uh, was was you know was, 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 I was losing my crowd. Things were changing. So what do you do as a DJ? You change, but you still stick to your rhythm of what you believe, because I was not ever gonna change off and start playing any hip hop. As much as I love hip hop, that's just not me. That's not my thing. I don't knock any DJ who did it. It's all about that paper. I get it. I stay true to what I love, which is house music, and introduce something totally new to what my segment didn't understand or know. And so, hold on. You know I got it. What you want?
Y'all gotta watch the Facebook, please. Maybe when I say we were running out one <laughs> all over the spot. So like I said, I came home and brought this to the post, dropped it when I first played it. You know, my crowd turned around and looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> you know, that's a story that people don't know. They didn't quite embrace it right away. They they didn't quite understand what was going on because, like I said, that was not what I was normally doing. But, like I said, had to flip the strip, had to do a little something. So I said, well, I'll hit them with a 30-minute set and see, you know, introduce it also to myself because, like I said, I had just flown back into Detroit with a backpack full of this music. I myself did not know it. You know, I had to set up my setup, which is here. And I came home and I kind of researched some of the records I had. But, you know, uh, like I say, when you get something different, got to kind of know how you want to play it. Now, so quick short story about this. I thought it was so interesting. People didn't realize, like I said, in the Midwest, especially Detroit, we had just came from the Ghetto Tech Baltimore uh, I'm sorry, uh, ghetto tech. Uh, I call it booty music. In fact, I'm gonna pull a couple. I hate, I hate this music. But I bought some because I said, well, hell, if I buy it, maybe somebody else can't get it, <laughs> and that way I won't have to worry about somebody else playing this stuff. I'm not sure if what I have, but let me pull some one of these. But this was like the dance mania stuff that they had came out. And uh, you know, no, no disrespect to my people who were playing it. That's a perfect example. This is what we were going through. Hold on, let me let me speed it up to the speed it was actually being played. <laughs> no. Don't do it, brother. Don't do it to me, Kev. Don't do it, man. You know, uh uh. <sighs> so yes, no, that was the problem. That right there, see, that's where that's where the Midwest had came from. Right before this Baltimore club music that I brought, and I'm sure there might have been somebody else who had it. I'm not sure. I'm just tooting my own horn because hell. I, I hadn't heard it. And so when I got a hold to it, the first thing I said I wanted to do and make sure that I did not do was play it at that speed because I didn't want the next booty, ghetto, tech, whatever you want to call this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this music, I would not want to uh, allow... <laughs> this music to have a second life you know because and that was my fear i said if, if if people got a hold of this baltimore club music they may oh god help us they actually may try to turn this music into the next booty ghetto era because you really could if you speed this stuff up uh which god help us all uh See, that Baltimore okay. Club fits right in. Okay. Okay. No, we're not doing that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, we weren't doing that. I said we were not going to do it that speed because, uh, like I said, I don't want that to get any extra life. And if, I, if that got introduced, it probably would have became that. And so what I did, um, no, no shade to anybody, 
I did not tell a soul what the hell this was, where I got it from, nothing. Uh, for most of the music I had got, because like I said, it was strictly vinyl. We were, I was getting all this stuff I was getting on vinyl. And so I was not going to let, oh, what is on here? Let's just tap around and see what we have on some of this vinyl while I'm doing some talking. Look at that. Come on, it's so, I mean, this was Baltimore Club, that's what I called it. But in D.C., it was known as go-go music, but they were playing it at the speed of what JIT and what I just played, that 45 kind of segment. They were, they, their speed to go-go was fast. And so I had never heard of go-go, and so I was not familiar with them playing this at a certain speed. So for me, this is me. This is how I played it. This is the speed I wanted to introduce this music to. So the main purpose of that was I can go from this speed into another house set. I can still play house music because that was the main purpose of introducing anything was to figure out how to get back to playing house. How do I end my night getting you jumped up with some house tracks? <laughs> because that's my first love. And so Baltimore Club music was just sort of an interlude to hopefully bring you back around. And also as it got further into it, and a lot of these new DJs started picking up playing Baltimore Club music and started adding it to their sets. Man, this thing has just blown up. So many different DJs now are playing Baltimore Club music, doing their thing with it, which I love. You know, I, hey, however you got it. All right. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, however, if it was me or whoever introduced it to you too, and you and you put it into your repertoire, hey, who am I to knock it? I can't do it. It's, I got love for you. I, I've never been a hater, but like I said, when I got a hold to it, I kept it pretty much under wraps for about three years. The only way you heard this was via one of my CDs, and one of the things I did on my CDs. You only got like a minute. Uh, these, these things were only about four to five minutes long. These tracks were not that long. Uh, that's the crazy part. People didn't realize that either. Although when you came to the post, <laughs> you might have heard a eight minute uh, what bitches what. But that's because at that time, CDJs and all that, CD players that became available. And so I was able to do some sampling and, uh, you know, run some tracks that way where I didn't have to stand there and play. Uh, multiple tracks fast because that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> but uh, I still wanted to have some fun and bring Baltimore Club into the to, to the era. But um, but like I said, they weren't they were only like four, three to four minutes long. So if you if you just had the, nothing but vinyl or just had CDs uh, or just had some of these, and that's you know you were just running, you know you just gonna be doing some running. <laughs> <laughs> it was another song on here. I think this one had that. Um, uh, I'm gonna. They had a lot of that big girl baby, Mama Sa. I tell you, just just too much ugliness going on with this Baltimore club. But as I continue with the conversation, like I said, this was around 2000, so I would say it got real heavy. You know, Baltimore Club music just kind of took its own life. Probably around 2002, three, it was in full rotation. Um, like I can say I could not do a gig without playing it. It, it just became what it was. Uh, this is what people wanted. Um, Turn this up when you hear it was on one of those things that made the post, uh, which, like I said, was my after hours go crazy. People came over. That's it. Actually, was an introduction to me getting some radio gigs because. Like I said, you couldn't get this music anywhere. And so this was a blessing for God to drop this in my lap and allow me an opportunity to get a chance to play it and introduce for those that came and got it through me. Appreciate you for supporting it and just doing our thing. And also you guys just taking a moment tonight to just hang out with me and talk about this great music, Baltimore Club music. You guys can get my stuff, djsent.com. I've got keys. I've got CDs. I've got tracks out now. Some of the stuff you just heard is going to be available. Man, you know, going to be doing some parties. I was actually thinking, you know, we were talking about this the other day 
uh, on Facebook, I just made a mention, might do a, a, a post reunion. Thinking about going over there and just having one old good shing ding and, and actually playing some, some beats from back when the post was open for those that didn't get the opportunity to experience you know what the post music really was all about because man this was this was pure post time and uh i mean we got it in play a little bit of this for you Y'all remember that? Woo! Y'all were getting it in. Yes, y'all were. It was some ass shaking, some body grinding, some hump humping going on. I was trying to watch and see. <laughs> All that mystical stuff. Remember when mystical? What? Whatever happened to mystical? My God! But anyway, yeah, that that all oh, that was ugly, and like I said, that was what was jumping. That that's what made the clubs hype. You know, once once we got past, you know, the era of everything else going on, this stuff is what made the clubs go. And so, I mean, come on. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I liked it because it was such fun music. It just had, it came with everything, Com cartoons, it came with TV shows, it came with, um, you name it, people were doing Boston Club. So it, by me saying that, big shout out to my guy. His name was DJ Seven. It is now, D or his name is DJ Taz, T-A-Z. And then my man, uh, you know, now his name is DJ Seven, but he's from Alabama called Bama Bounce. Man, I got—I don't know how I even got introduced to him, but he started providing me tracks of this type of music, but we'll say in the more current, uh, you know, 50 Cent came out with a new track. He was already producing his own remix version of it and playing it at his club spots. And um, so I was purchasing music from him. And like I said, it was, it was called BamaBounce.com. And he's still available today. He puts out some ugliness when I say the boy was just ugly, he just added to the repertoire because now we're getting away from the vinyl scene. CDs are starting to be more prevalent. I'm able to get more CDs. And so his music was available on CD. So now I got my little CDJs. It wasn't CDJs back then, but they're a little dual CD player. You can add that now into your vinyl sets. So it just brought a whole different measure of just craziness and fun, really. Because, like I said, he was doing stuff. I already had vinyl coming in through the store Liberated Music from, from D.C. So it was a very different collection of just different things. And for me, it just gave me an opportunity to just play so much different stuff. And for you, as a listener, it's just, just an opportunity to play and dance. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait,
baby, when I say it was track after track after track, we were dancing our little heenies off. Oh my God. Okay, let me see you. Where you at? Where you at? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> What's up? Hey, fam. Uh-huh. Oh my God, like I said, just vinyl after vinyl. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Big shout out to the guys who are producing a lot of this stuff. I'm sure I'm gonna forget somebody, but the main characters of this production that I can remember, Rod Lee, like I say, DJ7, that's S-E-7-E-N. Oh my God, um, Johnny Blaze. Uh, he was the one doing that M1 remix. There's so much. This is one of his records, as a matter of fact, Johnny Blaze was huge, huge. This song, to me, some of the stuff he was putting out. <laughs> oh my God, the epidemic of it all. <laughs> I mean, just anything. They were making the mix. Like I said, this is Mr. Johnny Blaze. So real quick, let me tell you about the story of, as I have this on vinyl and I'm, I'm walking around the city of Detroit, playing these different parties, um, you know, just kind of getting my name out there. 
you, of course you're going to hear more buzz about yourself when you're playing something that's totally different than most people have. And, I, you know, I get that. Nothing's wrong with that. But the issue became, um, I guess, because it was such a hard-to-find uh, music. Um, I know when I was going to the record store, especially for Millions of Memories, big ups to them, uh, when I would walk in, they would come to me and be like, hey, sit. People are coming up into the record stores looking for your CDs. They're bringing your music in here saying, hey, can I get this track? How do I get what's on this CD? How do I get my hands on this? And, of course, they had no clue. <laughs> the record stores had no clue. Uh, because, like I said, I, I just happened to have DJ Cedric play at my party, and he is who brought this here. Uh, to my knowledge, anyway, I mean, somebody else might have did it, but to who I got introduced to it by was DJ Cedric up at the Post, and so I didn't, I didn't believe that any of the record stores had really ever came across this music, so they had no clue how to get it, and so the only person you could come and talk to about it would be me, and like I said, I, at that time, was not giving any information about this music to anybody. It was sort of my little baby. Uh, damn it. Why would I want to give this up? <laughs> so I said, I can't give it to anybody. I can't give it to any record stores. So I did not give them any information about where I was getting this music from. And so it started getting a little, little hot outside, uh, I guess. And so I uh, got a, a friend of mine. Uh, buzzed me up one night. He said, "Sent." He said, "Look," and I, and I, I respected this guy, so um, he called. He says, "Hey, you need to be careful taking your Baltimore club music, especially your vinyl, outside. I mean, because I hear uh, somebody might be trying to set you up to rob you. You know, a lot of times as a DJ, um, we're out about late night." Uh, you're usually by yourself unless you come with somebody or you have an entourage, which I do not. Uh, so usually you travel alone. Um, and so, yeah, you could be a target for someone trying to set you up and take your music or, you know, cause you bodily harm, uh, you know, on their come up, if that's how you want to put it. So when he told me that, I, I was I understood that it was probably at that magnitude, because like I say, by that time it was about three years into this stuff. And yeah, the, the buzz about the city of it was a little crazy. People were at that time really curious to where the hell this shit was coming from. And DJs were not all that happy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you, but you know, when you're the person who have it, you don't understand the magnitude of what other people feel about it and you just do your thing. And so thank God at that particular time, like I said, CDs were just coming into the fold. I had just acquired a CD recorder. So I had just switched off doing cassette tapes uh, and started doing CDs to sell my mixes from. So I was at that time able to come down here and transfer most of the stuff I had on vinyl. Hold on, let's see what this is. <laughs> transfer most of this stuff. Like I said, transfer most of this stuff to CD and start carrying it that way. And so then I was able to leave my vinyl collection home. And so I didn't have to worry about at that time anybody uh, trying to hit me up and take my vinyl away from me. Uh, I did have some CDs that did come up missing, but that'll be a whole nother conversation. <laughs>
because uh, you know people go do what they go do, uh, you know, or or you know, it is what it is. But uh, want to wrap this up and want to say thank you guys so much for taking a moment to hang out with me down here in the dungeon. I'm gonna be doing this every Tuesday about nine o'clock. I usually try to wrap it up around nine thirty. I see it's going on ten o'clock, so I'm gonna break it down. Appreciate you. Have a good evening. Hey, lady. Insane. That's all I'm going to say. Insane. Like I said, once again, you guys can get some mixes. DJSent.com. Tune in every Tuesday right here, live in the dungeon Detroit with your girl DJ Scent. I thank you.